James Baldwin, The Fire Next Time The year is 1963. Racial tensions in America are reaching a boiling point. Segregation and discrimination against African Americans pervade society. On the night of May 11th, bombs explode in Birmingham, Alabama, targeting African American civil rights leaders. The community responds with months of riots and violent conflicts with police in Birmingham. Subsequent violent outbreaks across the decade in New York, Los Angeles, Chicago, and Detroit, among others. It's in this charged and tumultuous context that author and playwright James Baldwin published his seminal work, The Fire Next Time. In two eloquent essays, composed in the form of open letters, Baldwin shared his intimate perspective on racism in America. His work exposes its sinister roots in corrupted Christianity and misappropriated faith while envisioning the possibility of real change through understanding and compassion. So if you've ever been curious about the work that inspired generations of thinkers, leaders, writers, and scholars, this blink is for you. You'll discover more about the man behind the passionate essays, the man whose entire life's work became a rallying cry to love, courage, and shared humanity. Let's get started. It's personal. James Baldwin's fiery words sprang from the depths of his life experience. To understand the personal roots of his uncompromising social criticism, we must look to his formative years in Harlem. Born in 1924, Baldwin grew up poor in the thick of the Harlem Renaissance. The sights and sounds of this vibrant black artistic community left an indelible mark. As a child, he read voraciously. Local libraries offered him an escape from poverty and glimpses of a broader world. Baldwin's stepfather was a preacher who often abused him. This engendered a complex relationship with Christianity in the young Baldwin. While he drew inspiration from the moral force of biblical verses, he also saw glaring hypocrisies in how the church dealt with racism. As a teen, Baldwin began facing the harsh realities of racism in work and life. The limited opportunities available to a brilliant young black man stoked his frustration. He channeled this energy into pursuing creative writing with a singular focus. His experiences on the streets of Harlem gave his early stories an authenticity that resonated widely. In 1948, at 24 years of age, Baldwin left America to live in Paris, France. The physical and psychological distance gave him a new perspective on his home country. From afar, he saw how racism had warped life for all Americans, black and white. This outsider view would catalyze the searing social criticism of the fire next time. So he brought the full force of his personal truth to his work. His childhood encounters with racism, poverty, and religion shaped his moral conscience. In the black church, he saw faith used as a palliative against activism. In the diversity of Paris, he glimpsed how integration could abolish dividing lines. Baldwin's life experiences lent the book's arguments, gravity, and empathy. His writing burns with the moral urgency and intimacy of an open letter written by a concerned friend. Baldwin knew racism's immense toll not through studies, but through life itself. By framing his arguments in the personal, he reached readers' hearts as well as minds. America saw how racism had constrained a gifted young writer. Baldwin's personal stake gave ballast to his call for society's redemption through understanding. The book spoke with prose that flowed like poetry because its currents ran deep in Baldwin's own soil. A Letter to a Nephew The most intimate is the first essay titled My Dungeon Shook, Letter to My Nephew on the 100th Anniversary of the Emancipation. This long and weighty title already signals the gravity of Baldwin's message. The essay takes the form of a letter addressed to James, Baldwin's teenage nephew, 
James was the eldest son of Baldwin's brother, David, named after his uncle, the famous writer. Through his familial voice, Baldwin's arguments gained immediacy and moral urgency. The date also carries significance. Baldwin wrote in 1963, exactly a century after Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, declaring slaves in Confederate states to be free. But 100 years later, America still languished in racial inequality. The civil rights movement was building momentum with protests and pushback occurring across the country. Within this charged historical context, Baldwin shares an intimate message with the next generation. He begins affectionately, making it clear James is beloved by his uncle. With care, honesty, and empathy, Baldwin imparts advice to his nephew about how to respond to the racism of America. He urges James not to allow himself to be consumed by hatred in the face of discrimination. Though anger is justified, he argues, it will only lead to self-destruction. Hanging on to the truth of his humanity was paramount, and not giving into racist notions of his self-worth. Instead, Baldwin argues his nephew must realize that white Americans are also trapped by segregation, just in different ways. He must recognize their common humanity. Baldwin pushes the young James to rise above, to become more than this discrimination would have him believe possible. He warns against the temptation to curse or condemn white people as evil, for doing so will only perpetuate the cycle of hatred. The path forward lies in love, compassion, and understanding. The same values Baldwin urges his nephew to embody as a young black man finding his place in the world. Now, Baldwin doesn't downplay the injustice and violence faced by African Americans, but asserts the innocence and goodness within even those who commit harm. He argues that the responsibility falls not just on white people, but also on black people to realize their shared bonds. Baldwin's words stand out for their moral elevation and refusal to demonize. He appeals to his nephew's highest self, calling on him to embrace universal humanism rather than factionalism. The letter exemplifies Baldwin's soaring empathy and belief in reconciliation. In the end, Baldwin urges faith in the capacity for change. He doesn't see integration as the final step, but instead mutual understanding by all Americans beyond racial division. Through this intimate portrait of youth in a troubled time, Baldwin calls on society itself to grow up and actualize its ideals. An Oratory While the first essay took the intimate form of a letter to Baldwin's nephew, the second broadens in scope and tone to a more rhetorical level. Titled Down at the Cross, Letter from a Region in My Mind, this essay adopts a prophetic and righteous style. Baldwin shifts from familial advice to fiery social criticism. Like an Old Testament prophet, Baldwin assumes the mantle of a preacher addressing America as his congregation. He harnesses the moral power of the sermon to condemn the failures of the nation's institutions, including the black church. Baldwin's rhetoric evokes the cadence and imagery of biblical verses, but rather than comfort, his words provoke. He argues that Christianity in America has morally failed African Americans by encouraging them to patiently endure racism and await a heavenly reward. According to Baldwin, the black church preaches the promise of paradise through religious salvation, but for Baldwin, this serves as an opiate, distracting and pacifying African Americans from demanding justice in the present. And he doesn't reserve his critique for Christianity alone. He also condemns the nation of Islam and black nationalism for merely inverting the hierarchy of racism rather than abolishing it. The so-called black supremacist doctrine only perpetuates the cycle of hatred and outrage. 
Baldwin argues the church and mosque both abdicate responsibility for achieving justice. Instead, he calls for African Americans to embrace humanism beyond racial division. And only by recognizing their bonds of common humanity with white Americans can true equality be achieved. Whether speaking as a caring uncle or righteous preacher, Baldwin argues for eschewing hatred and embracing love. He alternately cajoles, instructs, and inspires, with language echoing both the pulpit and the street. Ever-present is his belief in redemption through mutual understanding. An Enduring Legacy When it was published in 1963, the fire next time landed with explosive impact. Baldwin's searing critique of racism and religious hypocrisy resonated with a nation in turmoil. Over 50 years later, the book remains a seminal piece of social commentary. So what accounts for its enduring significance? Upon release, the book was an immediate sensation, selling over one million copies. The clarity and passion of Baldwin's arguments struck a chord. He expressed the growing anger and impatience of black Americans in a clear, poetic voice. Baldwin's insights illuminated the hypocrisy of supposed Christian values used to justify racism and oppression. The book became emblematic of a shift in the tenor of civil rights activism in the early 1960s. Baldwin gave forceful expression to the frustration fueling the movement. While not abandoning King's ethos of nonviolence, his words conveyed the urgent need for change in searing, vivid prose. The fire next time marked a pivot toward assertiveness in demanding equality. As an openly gay black author, Baldwin also pioneered the intertwined analysis of racial and queer identity. He framed the civil rights struggle as affirming the shared humanity and dignity of all people, regardless of race, gender, or sexuality. In this case, Baldwin was light years ahead of his time. The raw yet contemplative tone of the book distinguished it from other writings of its era. Baldwin's language conveyed moral conviction through intimate revelation, rather than detached history or theory. He sought to prick society's conscience by exposing the lived reality of racism's damage. And while not optimistic, Baldwin resisted despair. He envisioned the possibility of reconciliation through mutual understanding. This belief in speaking hard truths as the prerequisite for progress gave the book its lasting power. More than half a century later, Baldwin's insights remain relevant. Racism in America endures, evidenced by ongoing tensions in the criminal justice system and frequent cases of police brutality against black Americans. The fire Baldwin warned of still smolders today. Modern activists and writers look to Baldwin's unflinching analysis as inspiration. His capacity to dissect complex problems with empathy and nuance models how to discuss fraught social issues. Baldwin exemplified combining righteousness with deep reflection. Ultimately, the work stands as a towering achievement of moral courage. Baldwin's profound arguments complicate questions of race, religion, and justice in ways America still grapples with today. Through the fire of his words, Baldwin continues illuminating the path to social progress.